So I'm about to go swimming with an underwater robot. That's not something I've ever done before, but behind me is the Ocean 1K. It was developed by Stanford University engineers, and it's a robot designed to go deep in the ocean, a thousand meters or about half a mile. The idea is you send this robot down where humans can't go because it's strong enough to withstand pressures, but it still has agility and manual dexterity. Probably can't take my mic yet. We've come to Stanford University to get up close with the Ocean 1K, built by the university's robotics lab. Lab director Usama Khatib wanted to create a robot that could explore the deep ocean using haptics or touch-based controls. The result? A deep sea robot built tough like a submarine, but with the agility of a human diver. A human cannot dive beyond hundreds of meters. If we need to interact with the environment, with the oceans, we need a machine. And today we have a lot of machines, but these machines can see, but they cannot do. And this is Ocean One. Ocean One essentially is your hands, your eyes. It's uh, your avatar in the water. The robot started life as a prototype known as the Ocean One. Back in 2016, Stanford took the Ocean One down to a 17th century shipwreck off the coast of France. While the design worked, the team realised they needed to be able to go deeper underwater. So Katib began working on the Ocean One K, a new, stronger robot that takes its name from the 1,000 metres it can go below the surface. To go that deep, the team had to redesign the robot to survive. Going to 1,000 metres, uh, it's almost like 10 times the depth we went to before. This is 100 times the atmospheric pressure. It's a huge pressure. And everything we've done before uh, will collapse at that pressure. To help it survive those pressures while still being able to float, Katib and his team filled the robot's arms with oil. Special spring mechanisms then compress that oil to match the water pressure, stopping the arms from collapsing and protecting the electronics inside. The team also upgraded the robot's hands with more fingers and more grip so it could handle delicate objects underwater. The result is a very human-looking robot, but according to Katib, being able to work underwater and pick up delicate objects meant designing a robot with a human shape. In this environment, you cannot work with one, one arm or one hand. If you put your arm behind your back and think about how you're going to do things, it's very difficult. So you need two arms. Already you get to the upper body of a human, right? Uh, remember, this is a mermaid. It's not a human-like. We didn't put legs on it. That mermaid is also built with stereoscopic vision, a camera in each eye that creates three-dimensional depth. But the biggest achievement of this robot is the haptics, sensors in the robot's hands that give feedback to the human controller. When the hands hit an obstacle or pick up an object, the human behind the controls can feel it as though they're in the water. Oh my God, this is amazing. I mean, you really feel like you're touching real material. You can feel the friction, the compliance. You can feel everything as if your hand was there. In July 2022, Katib and his team took the new and improved Ocean 1K to the Mediterranean, testing the robot at different depths. They even used a robot-held camera to get in close to shipwrecks, something that many bulky underwater robots just can't do. But for Katib, the highlight was seeing the wreck of an Italian steamship, Le Francesco Crispi, 500 metres underwater. Approaching the Crispi was one of the most incredible experiences I've ever had. You are seeing, looking through the eyes of the robot, and you see your, the hands of the robot, now they are your hands. You are moving them and you're coming closer and closer. And I remember when I touched the crispy, it was, it was really, really emotional. 
The Stanford swimming pool is a long way from the Mediterranean, but here I got a great sense of what it feels like to operate this robot. You just go like little by, like this, and uh -huh. when you want to go to the left, you go like this. Ah. And when you want to go forward, just go like this. Okay. And when you want to go backward, you <laughs> go like okay. this. Okay. And up and down. Excellent. It's, it's so, so simple. I get a rundown of the controls and how to steer and move the robot underwater, and then it's up to me. So even though the robot's in the water right now, I can actually control it with these haptic controllers, and they're designed to be incredibly intuitive, so it feels as though you're moving your own arms. So I can squeeze in to grasp objects, and the robot hands move, but also I'll feel resistance. So if I run the robot into a wall, which I shouldn't do, I'll actually feel that feedback in these controllers. Even though the robot's underwater, I'm still fully in control. Controlling the robot from the surface is one thing, but getting underwater with the Ocean 1K is a whole other experience. I just finished swimming with a robot. I've got mad goggle rings around my eyes, but it's amazing. It feels a lot like swimming with a human. It's got eyes, it's got these arms holding things out in front of it. It's really surreal to realize it's being controlled by a human, but it's also so robotic. I really agree with the engineers here. It feels kind of like your avatar under the water, you know? I'm dealing kind of with a human, but it's still incredibly robotic. I kind of want to keep swimming with it. It feels a bit like swimming with a dolphin, but way more high tech. After swimming with the Ocean 1K, it's easy to see how much this could change underwater exploration. Handling delicate coral, exploring shipwrecks, even commercial jobs like fixing underwater pipelines. Anywhere you need human dexterity, but you can't send a human. The Ocean 1K might even one day be used in space. Imagine a robot that could explore lakes on distant moons and exoplanets. For now, the Stanford team is still testing and improving the Ocean 1K, whether it's in the deep ocean or in the Stanford swimming pool. After all, there's nothing quite like swimming laps next to a robot.